Hello and welcome everyone. Here we are to discuss about inverse functions. In this video, I'll try to explain uh, how to find inverse of a function. First of all, uh, the inverse of a function to be function, uh, it has to be one-to-one. -one. What does this mean? We need to check the one-to-oneness of the given function. If you have a function f of x, to check uh, for one to one, we can have two different methods or more than one. One of the method is uh, if f of x one uh, is equal to f of x two, this implies x one is equal to x two. So this is one of the method. If f of x one equal to f of x two, then uh, you can consider this one as a premise. You can take this as a premise, and the conclusion has to be f x1 is equal to x2. So if this conclusion becomes true, if we're considering the premise as true, then we can say it is 1 to 1. For example, f of x is equal to, uh, we can say 2x plus 1. Then what's f of x1? Uh, it's going to be 2x1 plus 1. What will be f of x2? Uh, it will be 2x2 plus 1. So are they equal? Like consider f of x1 is equal to f of x2. That means 2x1 plus 1 must be equal to uh, 2x2 plus 1. Through my process, I have to end with x1 is equal to x2. Otherwise, I can't say it's 1 to 1. Okay, let's check. Plus 1 both sides there, so we can cancel it, or we can make minus 1, minus 1 both sides. So what remain here? 2x1 left is equal to 2x2. So uh, again, logically, we can divide both sides by 2 because it's mathematical equation. My same numbers can be divided, so x1 is equal to x2. This implies that the function is 1 to 1. This is a linear function. Normally, linear functions are 1 to 1. So that uh, the inverse of this function will be function at the point. Okay, what does uh, this note is trying to explain for you? The inverse of the function to be function, originally the function has to be one to one, that's it. The other uh, checking mechanism to check whether a function is one to one or not is uh, graphically. If you can remember the graph of the given function, mostly for example, linear functions, uh, their graph is just a line either slant to the right or slant to the left they might pass through the origin or not but they are inclined line linear function linear functions are represented by ax plus b the a will be uh, the slope so if the slope positive they are to the right slanted the slope negative means slant to the left uh, exponential functions also curve uh, either increasing or decreasing for example to the power of x if you consider it's exponential function uh, it is increasing up right and down left, but it will never cross the negative x-axis. Anyway, these kind of functions by horizontal line test checking. If you draw a horizontal line, uh, they will be crossed only once, so that they are uh, one to one. If you consider a quadratic function, for example, f of x is equal to x square, it's a parabola. It's an upward parabola. If the coefficient positive upward, if the coefficient negative, it will be down one. Anyways, when you check by horizontal line test, they will be crossed twice. That means they are not a one-to-one -one function. So to say one-to-one, -one, by horizontal line, the given function, the graph of the given function has to be crossed just once. So uh, this is the other way. The other way is graphically. Graphically, we can check whether a function is one-to-one -one or not. Okay, still we are like trying to revise. Here is another example. Uh, what does this example says? If a function f of x is equal to x cubed minus x plus 1, uh, can we say the inverse is a function also? By counterexample, uh, we can take from the domain 1 and negative 1. If you insert 1, the outcome will be uh, 1, and if you substitute negative 1, also the outcome 1. That means the function is not 1 to 1. So, what does this imply? Uh, the inverse is not a function. Uh, the other just notation, what does it say? Uh, if the inverse of f is g, then uh, we can say g is the same as f inverse, and f is said to be invertible. So if the function has an inverse, we can say it is invertible. So how to find the inverse of a function? That's our main lesson, how to find. To, to find the inverse of a function, there are three steps. The first step, exchange uh, the place of x and y okay in place of x write y and in place of y write x first of all don't forget f of x is the same as y 
or g of x or h of x whatever it is that is uh, what means y so in place of x write y and in place of y write x first and the next step solve for, uh, y in terms of x after substituting just make the y the subject try to write it y is equal to whatever just make y the subject to the left side the right side the other expression that's going to be the inverse okay it's better to see practically by examples okay here are three functions as you see in the example here find the inverse it says so a f of x is equal to uh, i can say solution f of x is equal to 4x minus 3 so f of x means you know it's obviously y is equal to 4x minus 3 so according to the first step in, in place of y write x which is equal to in place of x write y that means 4y minus 3 then try to make the y the subject so that you can bring the 3 to the right the left side or you can add 3 3 both sides so when you bring the 3 to the left side it will be x plus 3 is equal to 4y so you can divide both sides by 4 because our objective is to make the y alone or the y the subject so what happened y become is equal to x plus 3 over 4 this y is after exchanging so that means this is the inverse the inverse of the function which is equal to x plus 3 the whole over 4 that is the inverse of the first function okay we can go to b b again f of x is equal to 1 minus 3x as i did before f of x means it's the same as y it's equal to 1 minus 3x and then in place of y write x which is equal to 1 minus 3y then bring the 3y to the left side so it will be positive 3y is equal to the x to the other side 1 minus x then divide both sides by 3 so the y will be 1 minus x the whole over 3 but this y means the inverse this is what we are looking for 1 minus x over 3 this is inverse finally d d uh, it says f of x is equal to x over x minus 1 the same process y is equal to x over x minus 1 and then what's next uh, in place of y right x x is equal to y over y minus 1 then crisscross multiply here x times y will be xy minus x because this x will multiply both of them is equal to 1 times y will be just y then collect the y's family make it together to the left side so xy minus y is equal to just x the x it is alone it is shifted to the other side then take out common y what remain x minus 1 remain in the bracket which is equal to x then divide both sides by x minus 1 and this cancelled out what left here y left that the y that we are looking for here is the inverse f inverse of x become now the same as x over x minus 1 the domain is already restricted x different from 1 so all of the examples here done by the same pattern and the same process what we did let me put once the first one f of x is equal to 4x minus 3 so f of x is the same as y okay here it is nothing changed here in place of f of x just i wrote y now after this change started in place of y x written and in place of x y written and then the next step after this trying to make the y the subject that means trying to make the y alone so collect everything to one side and make the y alone here so the negative 3 shifted it will be added because it was minus here when you shift it will be added here then divide both sides by 4 so y become uh, x plus 3 over 4 this y is the inverse that is the rule says so f inverse of x will be x plus 3 over 4 the second example let me repeat once again here f of x is equal to 1 minus 3x given so in place of f of x i wrote y because f of x or g of x or h of x this is means y then uh, the step started here after this what did i do in place of y we wrote x and in place of x we wrote y then the negative 3y is shifted to the left hand side which is 3y equals 
and x shift to the right side, 1 minus x. Then divide both sides by 3. So y become 1 minus x over 3. This y is the inverse of x. So we are done here. The next one is somehow like, uh, since it is fractional form, we need to process a bit. So f of x is equal to x over x minus 1, it says. So the same pattern like in place of f of x, write y, which is equal to x over x minus 1. And then uh, exchange it, interchange the place of x and y. Place of y, I wrote x. Place of x, uh, we wrote y. Then crisscross multiplication. Then collect all the y's family together, like one side. I brought the y here. It will be x, y minus y equals the negative x goes to the other side, which is here it is. Then I take out common y, y. When you take out y, what left here? X left. Here what left? Nothing. But y means just times 1. So 1 remain. That's why when you take out y, y common, what left? X minus 1 will remain. Then divide both sides by it to make y alone. This y is the same as the inverse. So this is a way how to find the inverse of a function. You need to follow the three steps. Any function given, uh, it will be easier to find the inverse. But here, there is uh, one definition. What does it say? A function g is said to be an inverse of a function in f, uh, if and only if uh, the composition of g, g, g of f or f of g it has to be identity function. What's identity function? Again, it's defined here. Identity function uh, i of x is the same as x. Identity function doesn't mean anything. Like, for example, in my case of multiplication, 2 multiply 1, which is 2, 3 multiply 1, which is 3, 4 multiply 1, which is 4. Like, when you multiply a number by 1, the number itself will give you that means the number one is identity over the operation multiplication the same manner in case of composition x is identity because if you have a function f if you compose it with identity you get f okay f compose i means if you compose a function any function with x the result will be the function itself right hand or left hand you can say i compose f also the same will be f so two times one or one times two the result is two 3 times 1 or 1 times 3, the result 3. So that the number 1, we call it identity over the multi over the operation multiplication in case of mathematics, you know, the, ma the four mathematical operation. So in case of composition, the identity function is x. When you compose any function with uh, the identity, the result will be the function itself. So that definition is here. It's already defined for you. So what does the rule say? Uh, actually, our main definition here is definition 1.3. What does it say? Uh, when you compose two functions, if you get identity, we can say uh, the two functions are inverse of each other. In my previous video, uh, I had an appointment to explain this one. Here it is. So let us see by example. In this example, what does it say? Show whether uh, or not each of the following functions are inverse each other or not. There are two functions here. I need you to focus and see them properly. What are they? f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. And the second function, g of x is equal to logarithm of x to the base 2. Are they inverse each other? Check. That's the question. The main question is, says, are they inverse each other? So we need to apply the definition 1.3 here it is. What does it say? G compose F. It must be equal to F compose G. It has to give us uh, X identity function. So like one way, one way forward process, if you go, that will be enough. So what is F of G of X? It means F of, what's G of X first? G of X is logarithm of x to the base 2, which is equal to, and remember, what's f of x? f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. If I say f of y, it will be 2 to the power of y. Whatever an input I take here, the f uh, operator did, just it will take it as the exponent of 2. So here, the inner part is logarithm x to the f of something here, there. f of like y, you can consider this one as y. So what, what will happen? According to the f rule, just to the power of x. So it will make exponent everything, like to the power of logarithm of x to the base 2. Now, the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are the same. So there is a rule again. a the power of logarithm of x to the base a is the same as x. Always, if the base, the two bases are the same, you can take uh, the result will be x for uh, some restricted a. So here the bases are the same. So the outcome will be x. This is f compose g. You can check by g compose f also. g of f of x. This means g of f of x is equal to uh, to the power of x. 
this number now will be inserted in place of xa because g of x what, what does the, the g uh, operator do it or the g machine it will make logarithm of x to the base one if this y i will make this one so consider this one like y so what you have the logarithm of to the power of x to the base two two then this exponent will be a coefficient you can bring it here according to the logarithm so x times logarithm of two to the base two remains but two to the base two is one so one times x will remain x so when you compose f with g or g compose f the outcome will be x means they are equal like identity function both both sides one side is enough mostly but you can check both sides so it is identity function it gave us so we can say uh, the inverse of to the power of x will be uh, logarithm x to the base 2. So to the power of x inverse is the same as uh, logarithm of x to the base 2. This one actually it looks like the power of negative 1, not like that. The inverse of this function in ways logarithm x to the base 2 or the inverse of logarithm x to the base 2 is to the power of x. You can take it as a real rule after this. Next example here we are. There are two functions here, f of x is equal to uh, x plus 1, f of x is equal to uh, x plus 1 over x plus 2. And again, the second function g of x is equal to 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. We are given this. So are they inverse each other? That's the question. Don't forget. But the domain here, x greater than negative 2, and the domain here, uh, x different from 1. Okay. So now let's check if it is uh, inverse each other, f compose g should give us what? x. That means f of what is g of x? 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. Somehow longer this one. You see, in place of f of x, I substitute 1 minus, I mean, in place of g of x, I substitute 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. Then don't forget the f operator. f of x means it is the same as what? x plus 1 over x plus 1. If I make this one y, it's going to be y, y. Like y plus 1 over y plus. So consider this the whole thing as y. The whole thing. You can take it as y. So what will happen? 1 minus 2x over x minus 1 plus 1, the whole over 1 minus 2x over x minus 1 plus 2. Because the f did, okay, as an input, if you take y, what will happen? y plus 1 over y plus 2. If you take z as an input, it will be what? z plus 1 over z plus 2. So you can consider this the whole thing as like y or z. Then the y plus 1 and the y plus 2. So you have to finish it by crisscross. Uh, this is going to be 1 minus 2x plus, multiply here also, x minus 1, the whole over x minus 1. Again over here, uh, 1 minus 2x plus, the 2 will multiply both, 2x minus 2 over x minus 1. Here, you can cancel x minus 1 and x minus 1. What left now? Uh, 1 minus 1 also cancel here. Negative 2x plus x will be negative x. Remain up, down, and negative 2x and 2x will cancel, and 1 minus 2 will be a negative 1. So negative cancel, finally, the answer will be x, you see? We compose. So f of g of x, uh, it gives us x. You can check g of f of x also uh, later on. Later on, you can check g of f of x. The result will be the same, finally. The result will get it to x. So our conclusion, okay, uh, we can de deduce that f and g are inverse each other. Inverse each other. That's the point. So once, let me repeat. Like the general idea, f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 2, and g of x equal to 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. We need to check whether they are inverse each other or not. What did I do? f compose g, it should give me x. So, f of g of x. g of x means 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. Then f of this thing, the whole thing, like consider it like one variable, like y. So what does f of x do? f of x means x plus 1 over x plus 2. It is f of y, y plus 1 over y plus 2. So this, the whole thing is like y. So y plus 1 over y plus 2. Then we operate this one, like crisscross process. Uh, okay, because 1 means 1 over 1, and 2 means here 2 over 1. Then crisscross, 1 minus 2x times 1 will be 1 minus 2x, and x minus 1 times 1 will be x minus 1, the whole over 
x minus 1 and the same thing finally we are we got uh, x so that they are inverse each other will be our conclusion very good let's continue to the next one okay the next example uh, what does he say f of x is equal to let me write it here f of x is equal to x plus 5 the whole over x plus 1 x plus 5 and g of x is equal to 5 minus x over x plus 1 again here we are asked to check whether they are inverse each other or not so the same pattern f of g of x is equal to it must be equal to x okay this implies f of what's g of x 5 minus x over x plus 1 which is remember f of x f of x is what x plus 5 over x plus 1 2 not 5 and 1 numerator and denominator whatever the variable you put here so if it is f of y what will happen y plus 5 over y plus 1 so consider this the whole thing as y so it will be 5 minus x over x plus 1 take it as the y i say so plus 5 the whole over again 5 minus x over x plus 1 plus 1 like I did before, crisscross, which is 5 minus x plus, you need to multiply by 5. 5x plus 5, the whole over x plus 1. Again, the whole over crisscross, 5 minus x plus x plus 1, the whole over x plus 1. Okay, x plus 1, x plus 1 cancel. And 5 plus 5 will be 10. 10 plus 4x. So 5 plus 5 will be uh, 10, 5 plus 5, 5 plus 5, 10, and negative x plus 5x will be 4x, the whole over, and again here the x cancel each other, and 5 plus 1 will be just 6 only, okay, therefore this result, uh, it is a, it's not the same as x. It doesn't give us uh, the composition of f and g finally we don't get x we have got some kind of linear function we can simplify and write this one as uh, we can simplify by 2 it's going to be 5 plus 2x over 3 but this is not the same as x so we don't get x means f and g are not inverse each other So in our previous example, the first one A and B, uh, we have got finally X and X. That means they were inverse each other. But this time we don't get the final result uh, X. So that we can say that the two functions are not uh, inverse each other. So don't forget uh, our discussion till now. We have seen how to find inverse of a function. That is our core lesson. And next to that, when two functions are inverse each other, when you compose, you will get identity function. Identity function in case of composition is x. Finally, there are exercise 1.11. You can get it in your textbook. You need to try all of them uh, from question number one until number six. Uh, then in the next video, I'll come back with the correction of this exercise. Thank you for watching.